Hey Ferret fam, welcome back to the channel. Happy to see you here today. We are going to be talking about what to do when bringing a new ferret home. So I'm going to be going over three different situations, what to do when bringing a new baby ferret home, whether that be from a reputable breeder or a rescue rehome site, what to do when bringing new adult ferrets home from a rescue or rehome site, and bringing home a new ferret or ferrets when you already have ferrets. All three will have similar tips, but baby ferrets do require a little bit more work. First, if you weren't already aware of the truth behind pet store ferrets, go check out my video on the subject, link above, and check out our ferret advocacy group, which talks all about the truth behind pet store ferrets, where they come from, ferret mills, because the majority of our ferrets here in the US, Canada, and Japan come from massive ferret mills. They run very similarly to puppy mills. Ferrets are kept in poor conditions, they are overbred, poorly bred, and it's just not something that you want to support. All right, sorry guys, I'm back. The ferrets have been just really getting on my nerves today, so I had to just take a break and come back. Anyways, what were we talking about? Pet store ferrets, don't get them. They come from a mill. Instead, rescue or buy from a reputable breeder. But before making that decision, please go check out my ferret education playlist and my video on baby ferrets to decide if you are in fact ready for ferrets. diet will make or break an animal and the earlier you can get them started off on the right track the better most reputable breeders will already be feeding a raw diet in which case you should continue that or at the very least feed the highest quality food that you can get your hands on and keep in mind that any commercial ferret dog or cat food dry food is wildly inappropriate for ferret consumption that being said make sure that you have whatever food that they were eating so that you can help transition them onto a better food because most ferrets will not switch foods cold turkey. Food and water bowls. I am a huge proponent for glass bowls. I think that they are the most sanitary feeding option. Plastic bowls are just really unsanitary, difficult to clean. You can use safe stainless steel bowls, but make sure to remove the rubber ring. I do use a really heavy ceramic dish for their water and I put it on a meal mat with a lip so they can't slide it around and get water everywhere. Do not use water bottles. These chip and destroy carnivore teeth. They also do not promote adequate water intake. Blankets and beds. Cat beds work really well for ferrets. I will just cover them with an old pillowcase. That way I can just keep washing the pillowcase and I don't have to wash the entire bed every time. I really like linen and flannel baby receiving blankets, but you can also use fleece. Or if you're savvy with a sewing machine, you can make your own. Appropriate toys. Stay away from anything with rubber or tiny pieces. I like hard plastic baby toys and cat wands. If you keep your ferrets in a cage for any period of time, I do not recommend keeping toys in the cage with them. Pee pads and or litter and litter pans. There are plenty of brands out there for pee pads. I'm not picky with them. There's also reusable ones if you have a really reliable washing machine. For litter, recycled paper pellets work really well. Some people use um, like horse stall bedding pine pellets but just make sure that they are kiln dried for litter pans cat sized pans work really well nothing too small or the corner litter box is marketed for ferrets they're just too tiny for ferrets ferret first aid kit i have an entire blog post on what should be in your ferret first aid kit which will be linked below travel cage i really like hard plastic cat carriers or small dog carriers for this you can also often attach like a hammock on the inside on the sidebars and a clip-on water bowl on the door. I've tried soft carriers too with mesh, but these are just not super safe if you were to get into an accident. They are also not escape proof and the same with like rodent cages that some people use for travel. Um, they're just not the safest option that you could do, but some people do choose to do rodent cages and that's totally fine. And finally, a ferret proof space. I have a blog post on this subject that I will link below. So all of these items should be ready for your ferrets regardless if you are getting kits, adult ferrets, or senior ferrets. And you'll notice I did not include a cage on this list and that is because I do not believe that you need cages with ferrets because ferrets are not caged animals. They need lots of free roam time. I'm a huge advocate for keeping ferrets cage free. That being said, you can certainly have a cage for them for short periods of time and in that case I only recommend the double ferret or critter nation cages and these will fit up to four ferrets anymore and you should get an additional unit unless they're only being kept in the cage for like a couple hours in the day. 
So if you're preparing to get a kit from a reputable breeder and you've searched around and you found a breeder, make sure to go through the list that I included in my backyard breeder video to ensure that you're not actually getting kits from a backyard breeder. Kits, regardless of where you get them, will be bitey. So it's very important that you go through a bite training with your kit and potty training as well. Check out positive reinforcement techniques on how to get your kits not to bite. I have a video on this on my channel and you can also check out the YouTuber Duke Souls who has many videos videos on this topic. And I also have a video on potty training your ferrets as well. I can't stress this next topic enough, and that is to introduce your kids to as many things as you can while they are still young. This helps prevent them from growing up fearful and timid. Here's a couple that I personally suggest. The first one being get them used to having their paws and toes touched and having their nails clipped. Have an exotic vet show you how to do their nails if you don't feel comfortable, and keep them on a weekly or bi-weekly schedule. If you do this, the chances of success as they grow older while doing their nails is going to be much higher. Praise and reward them for sitting still and allowing you to do their nails. This is the most important part. Number two, get them used to being in the car. You can take them on short trips just around the block or to the park. Ferrets are generally much better at adapting than cats and even dogs, so I haven't really personally met one that is afraid of being in the car, but it is still important to do it anyways because there will always be exceptions. Get them used to being at the vet. Now this is more post pandemic. <laughs> I wouldn't do this now, but um, call ahead at your vet, see if you can bring your ferrets in just to play with the vet techs and the receptionist, get used to the office and your carrier, the car ride, the whole experience so that when they grow older and you have to take them to the vet more frequently, they will be more comfortable with the process. And at your scheduled visits, make sure to stay positive and calm because ferrets will feed off your energy if you are very nervous. Number four, get them used to other people and animals. This is also kind of post pandemic. Have visitors come over once the ferrets have settled in, of course, and have them play with your kits, interact and handle with your kits. Have them be introduced to dogs and cats, which I do plan on making a video on later down the line. Number five, introduce new foods. If raw fed, try to give them as much variety as you can. Not only will this help round out the diet as a whole, it'll also just help make your ferrets not grow up and be super picky. Duck necks, rabbit bone, bison, anything that you can get your hands on, introduce it to them. If given whole prey, switch it up a lot. Do guinea pigs, mice, rabbits, quail. Keep a close eye on your kits for the first few weeks upon bringing them home. Make sure that they're not secretly chewing on things when you have your back turned and take things slowly. In the next section of this video, I wanted to put a large emphasis on because it's not something that is super well known and that is called the puppy blues. In our case, I'm going to be calling it the kit blues. And that is when a new pet parent is feeling super overwhelmed after getting a kit to the point where they are neglecting to take care of themselves or they are feeling feelings of regret towards getting this new animal. Don't worry, you are not alone if you have or are currently feeling this. Oftentimes it just requires a little bit of work, a little bit of patience on your end. Kit blues can happen upon bringing them home or weeks, even months after bringing them home. And it can last for a few days, a few weeks, or even a few months. And it affects everyone differently. Some people will just have constant breakdowns um, from caring for these kits, whether it be, you know, potty training isn't going well or bite training isn't going well. Uh, they don't know if they're cut out for it. They might consider even rehoming or just completely separate themselves from the animals to the point where the animals aren't getting that care that they need. There's a really good article on puppy blues that I'm going to link below on littlethings.com and it has a couple examples of what might be going through someone's head who might be experiencing kit or puppy blues. Maybe it was a bad idea for me to get a puppy or a kit in our case. I wish I thought this decision through more and am I a horrible person if I give the puppy or kit back? To lower your chances of experiencing something like this, make sure to do your proper research before getting a new animal. It should never be a spontaneous decision, though of course there will always be situations that cannot be helped. You're saving a ferret, it's an emergency situation, stuff like that. But don't forget to take care of yourself and shower and eat, take breaks if you need to. Sleep deprivation can occur and worsen something like this, so make sure if your kits are really giving you a hard time trying to sleep, sleep in a separate room if you can. Make it so they can't get onto your bed. If they're cage raging, assess their free roaming situation. Make sure you have a solid support system. You can join my Discord server if you want. We are all very experienced in kit blues and um, how hard it is to be raising kits. 
Okay, so when you bring your kids home, you're gonna wanna start off with just one room in your house. Don't let them explore absolutely everything at one time when they get there because it's gonna be really hard to monitor them. But don't feel like you have to put them up in a cage to settle first. I hear this a lot because again, ferrets are much more adaptable than a cat and even a dog. There will always be exceptions, of course, but most kids will just get right to playing once they get down onto the ground in their new environment. After a bit, let them explore into the hallway or another ferret safe room. They will be busy sniffing and exploring. They may not want to play with you or interact with you for a little bit, and that is totally normal. And many times they will just tucker out and pass out for many hours after coming home. Make them up some food and water for them. They may or may not eat. Kids will probably eat once they wake up. They may still be too distracted to eat or play with you. Okay, so when adopting senior or adult ferrets, a lot of what I had just previously said can be applied for them as well. But there may be a longer adjustment period. This is because some ferrets may come from a bad home environment or they received little to no handling in their developing years. Maybe they have health problems or special needs. When you pick them up, go straight home, don't do any errands or go to the store to pick up any last minute things. Bring them home to settle down first. The quicker that you can do that, the better. The first few days or even weeks may be difficult. They may not be totally depending on the ferret's experiences and level of trust. Not all shelter ferrets will be coming from bad home situations and the shelter will be aware of those things or they should be in which case they will let you know. You may or may not see your ferret's true personality until weeks or even months goes by, depending on what they've personally experienced, how their past home life has been. So it's important that you remain patient and understanding. Especially if the ferrets have been in multiple homes, they will be confused and even sad. Stick to a schedule, offer as much free roam as you can, as much fun play things as you can. Animals love routine. It helps them to adapt and cope with change. Some adults and senior ferrets may need refreshers on their bite training and potty training so do be prepared for this find out what they really like some ferrets like to stash toys and food some like to play in tunnels and tubes the more you do what your ferrets like the quicker that they will grow to love and trust you set your ferrets up to succeed be proactive and not reactive prevent inappropriate or fearful behaviors from happening so you don't have to correct them if you know the ferrets have bad experiences with dogs in previous homes don't throw them into an interaction with a dog immediately When bringing home ferrets, when you already have ferrets, it can be super, super exciting. There are a couple things that you're gonna wanna do beforehand before actually introducing them and integrating them into your current business. So kits from reputable breeders and rescues will have been vetted and just adult ferrets and senior ferrets from the shelter in general will be vetted prior to you getting them. But ferrets from rehome sites or other people may have an unknown health history. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you get them into the vet. And even with kits and adult ferrets from shelters or reputable breeders, they may not have a full vet history. They may not have had a fecal exam done or a mite check done, so you're going to want to go and get these things done. If your new or current ferrets are on temporary medications, wait until they run their course. Drugs affect the ferret system, so you're going to want to keep them stress-free as possible. Do a two to three week quarantine period before introducing them together. Keep them in two separate rooms, and after one week, you can begin swapping their blankets, and when you do introduce them, introduce them in a mutual territory like outside or in a bathroom, some place that they don't normally go to. Have them both on a leash and harness, drop one of the leashes if you know they're acting okay and then keep doing that until eventually all the leashes are dropped feel free to do one ferret at a time with each other educate yourself on ferret behavior by watching my playtime videos and my behavior video ferrets can play very very rough and the rule is no poop no pee no blood no foul it may take a few days weeks or even months until the ferrets begin sleeping together or even playing together so don't force them to do anything that they don't want to do so that is all that i have for you guys today i hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two. Thank you all so much for 15,000 subscribers and thank you to our channel members. I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys!